Miami Tower, Academy Air 244, taxiing Bravo for runway 28 right. We'll be ready for takeoff. Academy Air 244, Academy Tower, uh, runway 28 right. Turn right, heading 310, clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, 28 right, heading 310, Academy Air 244. Academy Tower, Cessna 666, Golf Bravo, firmly to it left on Delta, looking for parking. Cessna 666, Golf Bravo, Academy Tower, hold short of runway 28 right. Um, right. Academy Tower, Gulfstream 146, Mike Papa, inbound visual runway 28 left. Gulfstream 146, Mike Papa, Academy Tower, runway 28 left, clear to land. Traffic will be a CRJ departing runway 28 right. Clear to land, runway 28 left, Gulfstream 6, Mike Papa. Before takeoff check complete. Set thrust. Thrust set. This situation should never have gotten to this point. So why did it? What factors were involved? And how could it have been avoided in the first place? My name is Dan Lindsay. In this special episode, we're gonna look at the issue of runway incursions, a top safety concern for both the Federal Aviation Administration and the National Transportation Safety Board. There's a lot of information out there for beginning pilots to use to help them avoid runway incursions. But what about those training to be air traffic controllers? In this episode, we'll look at factors controllers should be aware of when dealing with pilots, ground vehicles, and other controllers. We'll also talk to some real pilots, controllers, and safety professionals to examine why runway incursions happen and how they can be avoided. All that and more is coming up on ATCAST. Hey, Roger. Thank you. Jeffrey 1264, Boston Grand Taxi Ramp in November and Alpha. Boston Tower, Gulf Street, 717, Alpha, Boston, down the uh, island. At this instant, the crew of Academy Air 244 needs 3,000 feet to bring their aircraft safely to a stop. But as you can see, there's only about 500 feet between these two aircraft. At its current weight, the CRJ needs to be at about 144 knots to take off over the Skyhawk, but they're only traveling at about 85. Their only chance is to hit the brakes and hope that they slow down enough to miss the other aircraft. Let's see what happens. 80 knots. Checks. Aircraft on the runway, abort, abort. Reject, max brake. In this case, the pilots of the CRJ were able to slow down enough to just barely miss the other aircraft. No one was injured here, but had this been something larger than a regional jet, the outcome might have been very different. How could this have happened? There wasn't a lot of traffic, the weather was perfect, and there were no unusual requests from any of the aircraft involved. All it took was a momentary distraction for the controller to forget a routine but vitally important procedure that he may do countless times every day. Did the scenario have to turn out the way it did? Later on, we'll find out when we talk to some industry professionals and identify some key points where action could have been taken to prevent the situation from developing into a life-threatening emergency. We're going to start out by defining what a runway incursion is and look at some recent statistics. Then we'll look at some of the factors that contribute to runway incursions and some things controllers can do to prevent them from happening. We will also look at some new technology that's being deployed to enhance runway safety. A lot of the information from this episode is from the FAA's 2008 Runway Safety Report, which analyzes data from fiscal years 2004 through 2007. It's available for free download at www.faa.gov slash runway safety. To start off, let's take a look at the definition of a runway incursion. Any occurrence at an aerodrome involving the incorrect presence of an aircraft, vehicle, or person on the protected area of a surface designated for the landing and takeoff of aircraft. 
This means that any time an aircraft, vehicle, or person enters a runway surface without authorization, it counts as a runway incursion, even if there is no potential for collision. The FAA divides runway incursions into four categories based on severity. Category D, in which there is little or no chance of collision, but the incident meets the definition of a runway incursion. Category C, in which separation decreases, but there is ample time and distance to avoid a potential collision. Category B, in which separation decreases and there is significant potential for collision. And Category A, in which separation decreases and participants take extreme action to narrowly avoid a collision, or the event results in a collision. According to the report, the majority of runway incursions, 92%, were categories C and D, with categories A and B making up the remaining 8%. Runway incursions are also divided into three error types, pilot deviations, operational errors and deviations, and vehicle or pedestrian deviations. According to the FAA, a pilot deviation is an action of a pilot that violates any federal aviation regulation, such as a pilot crossing a runway without authorization. An operational error is an action by an air traffic controller that results in less than required minimum separation between two or more aircraft, or between an aircraft and obstacles such as vehicles or personnel. An aircraft landing or departing on a runway close to aircraft is also considered an operational error. Operational deviations refer to actions that do not result in loss of separation, but which may result in aircraft, vehicles, or pedestrians encroaching on a landing area that is designated to another control position without coordination and approval. Vehicle and pedestrian deviations result from a driver or person entering a runway surface without authorization, similar to a pilot deviation. From fiscal years 2004 through 2007, there were 1,353 runway incursions. There were 330 runway incursions in 2006, and in 2007, that number increased to 370. Pilot deviations accounted for 55% of the total number of runway incursions. 29% of the total was due to air traffic controller errors and deviations. Vehicle and pedestrian deviations make up the last 16%. If you think that controllers being responsible for only 29% of incursions isn't so bad, especially considering that pilots account for more than half the total, consider this. During the same period, Controllers were responsible for 42% of Category A and B incursions, while pilots were responsible for 46%. So from this data, the numbers are nearly even for pilots and controllers when it comes to the most serious kinds of runway incursions. What causes these errors? Coming up next, we'll talk to experts from a variety of disciplines, from air traffic control to human factors to flight training, and determine the leading causes of runway incursions. When may a pilot or controller consider an aircraft to be clear of a runway surface? A. When the controller determines that the aircraft will be able to exit the runway before any conflict occurs. B. When all parts of the aircraft are beyond the runway edge. C. When at least half of the aircraft is beyond the runway holding position markings. D. When all parts of the aircraft are beyond the runway edge and nothing will impede the aircraft's movement beyond the runway holding position markings. The correct answer is D. All parts of the aircraft must be beyond the runway edge and there must be nothing to prevent the aircraft from moving past the runway holding markings. Based on what you saw in the last segment, how would you classify the runway incursion that was shown at the beginning of this episode? Category A, Category B, Category C, or Category D? The correct answer is A, a Category A incursion. The pilots of the CRJ very narrowly missed colliding with the Cessna, which fits the definition of a Category A runway incursion. 